I got involved with music uh, when I was a child, actually. When I was five years old, my mother took me to McLevy's School of Dancing and Singing in New York. And I went there for, oh, two or three years. And uh, I took dancing lessons. And I didn't sing. I didn't take singing lessons. I never took a singing lesson. Uh, and then I always sang with my, my family was very musical. My father played sax. So anytime we had a party, everybody in the, my, my brother plays uh, piano. Uh, my brother's a great pianist. And uh, the whole family played. So. And I, would, I was, lived in New York as a child. And then moved to upstate New York when I was 13 years old. Went to school in upstate New York. And uh, I graduated in 1958 and went to college for a year and then went to uh, in the Marine Corps. And that's how I got to Baltimore. I got to Baltimore by meeting a girl in Parkville and I went to a party and I never left. Uh, we were married seven months after I left her and uh, 45 years later, she's still my wife. So that's how I got here. The Echoes, I was working for Merrill Lynch and I couldn't stand that. And then I was packing cigarettes in a machine and uh, this is not what I wanted to do with my life. So one night uh, before I had married my wife, we went to uh, a place called Hollywood Park. And I'll never forget it. I saw a band called Peaches of the Upsetters. And I said to myself that night, I got to do this. And of course, the other place that I went that night was the spa. And I saw Ronnie Dove, my good friend Ronnie Dove, and that was that was it. And I said, "This has got to. I got to do this." So I put that in the back of my mind while I was working and trying to make a living, you know, the best way I could at that time, because I just was getting going to get married and having we were going to have a child and and planning our life. So I I, I just kind of put it in the back of my mind. And we were living with my father-in-law in at that time in Parkville. And when we first got married, there was a couple, Woody and Dawn Spence. And we were playing canasta one night, and Woody was a drummer. And Woody said to me, he says, why don't we form a band? Let's get a band together. And I said, yeah, okay, let's do it. First I thought he was nuts, but then I said, yeah, let's go ahead and do it, because I really would like to sing. And we got the band together. Uh, we found three other musicians at that time, and Doc, Walt Anderson, Johnny Pillock, Woody, myself, and uh, uh, Gary Loomis was part of that. He was the sa first sax player that we hired. And we, we had our first night performing at the Palms in Brooklyn, down in Brooklyn, Five dollars a man a night. That's what we got paid. We got paid thirty dollars, and uh, that's how Tommy Van the Echoes started. We rehearsed and did some things together, and that was it. And the next thing you know, we were doing teen centers, and all of a sudden we got hired at Hollywood Park, and then George Mahalis hired us, and, and then we recorded, and then it was Katie Bar the Door, and then we were up and down the East Coast playing everywhere. And, at that time, we were we were the hottest band on the on the East Coast. We did a lot of work, so it was a, a very it was a quick time. It went by very quickly because uh, uh, it was a time of life when you really had a lot of fun and you really enjoyed what, what you were doing. I had a guy come up on stage and try to grab the mic, and he grabbed the mic, and I said, "You can't do that." And I went, boom, like that. And I got off the stage, and oh, we had a hell of a fight. It was unbelievable. It was a hell of a brawl. We had a lot of fun down there, though. I mean, it was fun at the same time. I can remember one time at Hollywood Park, a huge brawl broke out on the dance floor. And Wayne DeVinney was the doorman at that time. And, he was, and there was a door on the side of the stage, and he was throwing them out like cordwood. Just like Cordwood. 
and they were all stacked up outside. We had some beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful times. One of the greatest bands I ever heard was the Van Dykes. Uh, st still to this day, I thought that they were the best band. And, and uh, the Van Dykes were just spectacular. And the Admirals, who I worked with later. But the Admirals were wonderful, tight, great musicianship. Uh, I always felt, however, uh, that the one thing the Admirals lacked was personality. I thought they were very, you know, they're... And when I came with the Admirals, I think that I possibly may have added some of that to the, to the group, but they were very dry to me. They were always very dry. Great musicians, great players. And that's one of the reasons for my success in the business is because I was fortunate enough to surround myself with great musicians. Uh, that's why I was good. I was good because of the musicians I had with me. Uh, I had players in the Echoes and I had players in the Professionals. The two bands that I had, actually three bands. I had another group later called the Professionals, which didn't matter to much, but they were all great musicians. I always surrounded myself with good people. And that's the same thing in any business you're in. And if you're in a restaurant business, you're only as good as the help that you have. Otherwise, you're gone. It was time for the professionals I to break up. It was, you know, the guys wanted to go different ways, and I wanted to, I, I really wanted to get out. I was ready to get out at that time, and I'd had enough. I was I had enough being on the road, uh, and I was on the road six months of the year, for crying out loud, and I hated it. I didn't like it that much. Now, when I went on the road with the Admirals, it was a different cup of tea. We were playing different, we were playing major hotels and beautiful Great rooms. I wasn't playing nightclubs anymore. I was playing real super rooms. But I decided uh, the Admirals came looking for me after the professionals. They knew that the professionals had broken up, and uh, Tom Berry gave me a call. I said, yeah, I'd love to come. And that's when the, the association with the Admirals came about. That was 1972, maybe? Yeah, around 72, 73. And that was a great association, and a wonderful group. Capitol Records, uh, I can remember uh, being on Capitol distinctly, the fact that Capitol Records was in, embroiled in the great Beatle breakup at that time. And we had a couple of good songs with Capitol, with Soul Sister Annie. And uh, Soul Sister Annie was the one that they really wanted to release and there was another song that we wanted to release and they didn't have any desire to do so they wanted it as a b-side and i said well wait a while if you wait we'll maybe release it later on so we all released soul sister annie and unfortunately later on never came and about a year later that song was picked up by three dog night and became a number one song in the country which in the world which was one man band so and that's that's just the way the cookie crumbles i mean it's another question of being at the right place at the right time it's all a part of fate it's all fate <laughs>